Hello, my wealthy wives and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Man Rich Man, as well as founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent romance. All right, ladies, I have a very sincere and serious question for you. <laughs> Actually, it's serious. I may laugh, but this is a serious question because now with everything out there, and I just saw another run through of Sierra's prayer, and women out there, once again, we pray in her prayer, and I'll say this once more. Never mind, I'm not going to say it because I'm going to actually do something. One of my goddaughters asked me to do actually a video or a class in reference to how to pray because there is a way to pray that actually will answer prayers much quicker than how most have been taught to pray. But I'm going to say that for a different day, different topic, and for the master class because I am going to teach a master class on it. If you really want to understand how to call in your person, there is a way to do it. Take some consistency. There are skill sets behind it. But anyway, I digress. I have a question for you, ladies. And gentlemen listening, you're going to love this question. And you're going to probably laugh out loud when you hear it. But ladies, how well do you know men? How well do you know men? I mean, you personally, not you in the collective, not you and a bunch of girls making, having conversations and guesstimating, theorizing, possibilities, misconceptions around men. How well do you personally know men? I'll wait. <laughs> I asked the question because uh, it's amazing. It still amazes me, but I, because I get it. I get it because once again, how our culture brings up men and women. You're the whole concept of the opposite sex so to speak is still a mystery and now with them trying to toss in their no gender this gender top tri genders whatever's going on out there they're just adding to the chaos and the confusion and i will say this once more gender is a law of the universe it's a universal law masculine and feminine are always going to exist there's no eliminating it because it is a required component of creation in our universe okay so we're not going to be eliminating women. We're not eliminating men. And for those who choose to call themselves otherwise, that's a personal choice. I told you, I honor people in whatever position they want to put themselves in, however they want to live their lives. Because once again, it's not for me to tell you what to do, but you're not going to tell me how, what to do and how to think either. Like I said, I respect people and their choices and decisions. I do. Like I said, but you're not going to be creating chaos and cray-cray in my life because you can't figure out yours. Not happening. I'm very much a woman, very happy to be one, I'm not changing my terminology, we're not renaming me, I am a woman. Born, raised, living in the space, loving the space, and all the really beautiful things that come with it. Being a woman, once again, is such a marvelous experience when you understand how to honor and appreciate yourself. And what makes it even cooler is as you learn and love yourself, then we add the wonderful aspect of the masculine. Mm. You know I love men, right? I do. I think they're amazing. Now we're talking about men. Men, men. They don't need to be perfect, but it's a man who is working through the whatever craziness he grew up with and learning how to actually represent as a man. A man who understands how to honor himself in his space of masculinity. Overstand how to how to be at ease in the energy that makes him him. I just got to read the book. I just this author I ran across on Instagram. And his name is Jason Jason Wilson. And oh my gosh. I love what he's doing because he is someone who basically says, as men, they have to understand how to process their emotions. It's okay to have emotions and feelings and, and, and to really, in other words, have a, in a total personal experience because, once again, men who are really raised to be the masculine, the strong protector type, the, you know, the warriors or this or that, so often are taught not to, ex, you know, express emotions. Suck it up. Big boys don't cry. Man up. Do this. Do that. That blocks their ability to feel. It blocks your ability to express. So this author, oh my gosh, Jason Wilson. I'm thinking next year I may start doing some interviews because I really like a chance to have, you know, have some calls with some of these individuals I'm actually reading. He is someone who's definitely on my list of people I want to reach out to. 
But ladies, I bring up his him because as a woman, and I ask you, how well do you know men? Most women do not spend time going deeper to learn men. Like I said, you run off to your girlfriends, you run off to all these people that really have no concept of what men are and how men are, who men are. Bunch of theories, once again, a bunch of broken people out there having conversations on the side of men and women based upon their pains, their unresolved issues. So when I ask the question, how well do you love men? I'm asking because if you're going to be praying Sierra's prayer, let's go for that example right now. Because once again, that's a big deal right now. She put it out there. I just got to watch something, uh, a copulation of pictures of her with her quoting the prayer. And I'll say it again, it's a lovely prayer. It's also her prayer. And Sierra had to come to a certain point of just finally owning her shit, so to speak. When I say it just the way I say it, because that's really what it is. She finally had to go, yo, I get it. I, I'm a mess. I, I'm a mess. I really gotta oof, need help. SOS. And then was willing to do the work. And in the process, she meets Russell. And in the process, she's now in a space to receive a man who was willing to pour into her a man who was willing to stand up and be present for her. A man who's willing to literally be her shield and her covering. Now, ladies, that sounds so romantic and it sounds so loving. Oh my God, Miss Sophia, I want this too. Great. Do you understand how to be present with men? So I ask again, how well do you know men? Because I see so many women who put band-aids on stuff because they think, well, if I do this, I'll get that. Honey, you can't do, do you have to, ooh, it's work. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, so I say this all the time on the YouTube videos. I say this, I work with my cl private clients. I'm working with my master classes. I'm working with my private consultations. When I say it's work, it's work. And it always comes back to you. You know, I've got the online, acad the, uh, the academy, on the academy is interracial and cross-cultural dating um, Dating and Romance, Insider Secrets. That masterclass is open. As I mentioned, I'm putting it on the Academy. There will be live phone calls because it's open enrollment. Enrollment is open right now, but it's not going to be open forever. I'll be closing it down. I'll definitely give you guys advance warning when I do because next month in December, I want to do some live Q&As with that particular masterclass. But I need for those of you who enroll in it, so because those there are people enrolled in it as we speak, for those that are going to be enrolling and are enrolling in it, I need you to do it soon because I need you to have some time to actually get in there and do the homework so that when we come to the live Q&A's, you're ready to ask me questions and I have a chance to review some of your homework. I'm not answering the homework this time around because I want a chance to review it. So when we get to the Q&A, if I have additional questions for any of you, I can ask. This is such an important topic. I've said it before. Women are running off into these different categories. And what I what I was smiling when I was thinking about it, because I did an audio last night, I'm not recording it, because I t t totally forgot my washing machine and dryer were running in the background. So, and I lost the filter to my mic. So it was kind of loud. So I didn't post that video. But I'll share this, the statistics. In the realm of dating, and once again, if you look at social media, you think almost every other black woman has gone off and run off to date men of other cultures and different ethnic groups. But let me give you the real stats behind that. Out of 100 people, 97 people, and I'm going with the black population right now. I call them melanated because I don't like the word black because it means something that's not good. Look it up. Um, I'm not going into it. You guys, I will not go into the details on that. I saved that for my private stuff. But... For those of us with beautiful brown skin, and I'm just going with our numbers right now, out of 100 people, 97 are still marrying within the same color zone. They're still marrying within the same ethnic group. Now, there may be some cross-cultural stuff happening there, because cross-cultural is not about you going outside of your color zone, so to speak, to date. It just means you guys have different, you know, ideologies and experiences behind you that may not be, because you can have different cultures even happening under the same color zone, so to speak. But 97 people out of 100 are still marrying each other. 97. So all this lack of men and lack of that and lack, I'm like going, but 97 out of 100 are still finding each other. So obviously what's going on with all this 
ideology that there, this propaganda, there's a lack. Um, apparently not. Somebody's getting married. I see a lot of say again, go on YouTube, punch in black engagements. There's a ton of beautiful engagements happening. Type in black weddings. Ton of people getting married. Not know the conditions of their of their of their relationship after the wedding takes place, but I make the assumption that they're you know they're happily they made this decision together and they're happy with their choice. Now once again relationships are work, so that will up that will be up and down, but still they're together. And of the other three people, the other that three percent, um, thought would be your interracial and cross cultural, mostly interracial couples. And of that 3%, three percent, three of the 197, once again, are together with, with their same color zone, so to speak. Uh, three of the men are with women from other color zones, perhaps. And only 1.8%, and that's what I saw last time I looked at numbers, and I rarely do statistics, but sometimes I do check into things. Because once again, someone's running stats because they're looking at for marketing purposes. There's reason why people run statistics, just so you know. So last count I saw, now it might be a slightly higher number, but last count I saw, and it was a recent count, was 1.8 women of color, black women, are dating across color zones. So when you look at social media and you're seeing all these couples and all these women and these, these relationships, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'll say this again. I always want you guys to be with who you love and who loves you, who adores you, who cherishes you that's not a color thing that is a person thing but we will tend to find commonalities and some really beautiful points within people that we do share a background with i've said this before obviously i'm a melanated person there are things that that, that are part of our culture that i love there are things that i just love about being a melanated woman i do that other cultures just are not going to get you know, I, I think of the example of um, of our wrapping our heads at night before we go to bed. We do it. And I remember the first time I explained it to the individual I was dating, uh, the gentleman, the Caucasian gentleman, the white man I was involved with for, for years. Uh, first time he saw me do this, he was like, because he didn't say anything initially. It wasn't, he wasn't, didn't say anything initially. And one day he asked, he goes, he goes, I have a quick question. I go, sure, what's up? He goes, why do you, you know, wrap your hair every night because it's not a cultural thing for them and I looked at him I kind of smiled he goes I hope oh he goes God he goes I hope I don't this didn't offend you I'm like no I go it's a valid question I go because I realize you know your women do not wrap their head at night I go well here's the deal I go if I do not wrap my hair at night there's a good chance when we wake up in the morning you'll be smothering in my hair it will just get bigger <laughs> he started laughing I go a lot of reasons why we do it. I go mostly it's just really is to protect our hair, uh, to make sure there's not a tangled mess in the morning. I go it's a practical reason. But when you're within your same, and this is any culture, because every culture has things that they do that are you know just just, and every ethnic group has things that that they do that are just part of who they are. So when you're somebody who actually shares your those commonalities, you don't have to explain. We don't have to explain to our melanated men when we wrap our head at night. Matter of fact, the ones that love us and that we're involved with, they usually they usually have something for us or bringing things to us or finding things for us because they know. So there is a beautiful experience that happens when you are with people that are once again similar to you. But having said this, once again, I'm all about you once again loving who you love. Who do you appreciate? Who appreciates you? But it still goes back to my question, how well do you know men? Because if you do not understand men, I don't care what color zone you're moving in. You're going to run into issues and problems because you don't understand the mindset of men. And masculine men, they do have some commonalities all across the board, even across the color zone, so to speak, the ethnic groups, the cultures. But you need to also understand, understand how the cultures function. You know, what is their ideology when it comes to women? How do they feel? Especially if you want a man who truly is a masculine man, you need to understand what that means. What does that mean to you? And let's go back to Sierra again, because I'm only using her for the example because that prayer is all over the place right now. Um, she had to learn. She had to learn how to be present with a man who takes his responsibility as a man very seriously. Now, once again, I don't know a whole lot about Russell's background. I believe his parents are still married. Uh, I haven't looked into him lately. 
but he's coming from an example of a household where there was a man present to, you know, to show how to look after your family. And once again, I do not know the details of his parents' marriage. I do not. But he has been around somebody in his family that showed him examples of how to step up and be a man in a family, how to take care of your family. Now, I'm not saying every man has to come out of a two-parent household to see that example because there are men that grew up in single households, single mother households, or said how to be a man. I use my sons as an example. I'm a single mom. Been in lots of relationships, but they didn't have a dad in the house 24-7 to show them how. But I did make sure I found examples of masculinity to put in front of them because I'll say this once more, I'm not a man. I will never take that responsibility out. I'm not a man. People talk about, I'm the mother and the father. No, we're not. The single mom, we're mom. We're mom. Now, are we doing double duty and working responsibilities? Perhaps. But that's just because we're doing everything anyway because we're there but we're not the men we're not a man we know nothing about how to be a man even with me being as well informed and as well educated as i am on men and masculinity i'm still not a man i do not live inside their bodies i do not feel what they feel i don't experience they experience hormonally i do not overstand the physiology of them i appreciate the outward appearance of it but i don't know what goes on inside them hormonally i only have such great information on them because i talk to men I ask questions and they share information with me. They happily share information with me because I have a deep respect and honor and appreciation of men. I know men very well. And I'm not frightened of men. Once again, if you're frightened of someone, it's not the mass, it's not the gender per se, it's the person, it's the personality, it's, it's the it's the wiring of the person. So that's what I'm saying. So when women sometimes are talking about men and they're making all these generalizations, you know, men are this, men are that, and it's not, and it's un, it's like unflattering, unflattering or very negative when they talk in reference to men. Usually it's not even a direct man they're talking about. It's just men in general. Just like when men talk about women sometimes, it's just like in general. No, 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 no. We, we, if you're going to be in a position to receive your person, if you are ready, sincerely ready to be a woman who is well loved in a beautiful relationship with, with the masculine man, because once again, y'all out there calling for these protector providers. I want a protector provider. I know I make fun of that, but it just gets me because I'm like going, oh my gosh, well, do you understand the responsibility of him? Do, I ask that question because so many women do not understand that you have a responsibility to this man and you have to understand how to receive him as a man. Meaning, you cannot wear the pants in the house too. You cannot be bucking up against him on stuff. Because there are some women are aggressive. You guys, I'm not saying any of you that listen to me, but I know women, have you listened to women speak? Oh, the aggression. And you want to take that into a relationship with a man who also is in leadership and you want him to lead? And you have no concept how to how to sit back, relax, and communicate with him and you know, look at him and say, you know what, okay. Got it. You handle it. And then be there to support him, even if the his his plan didn't work, because he wasn't coming he wasn't coming into the process to harm you or to disappoint or whatever women say to men that hurts them and disempowers them because he didn't do what she said or how she said to do it. It's a lot of chaos out there, ladies. It doesn't need to happen. There really is. So when I ask the question again, how well do you know men? And I still come back to that question. Do you respect them? Do you like them? Because if any of you are trying to pray Sierra's prayer and you haven't got your mind right, hmm, hmm, it's not working. It is not going to work. It's not. Sierra prayed that prayer. And I said this the other day and I did a video. She prayed that prayer from a space of surrender. She prayed that sp that prayer from a, from a space of being willing to receive guidance. Because the universe, when she spoke to the universe, now whatever name I think she put, I don't because like I said, the energy that you're speaking to, it's universal energy. People put a variety of names on it, which whatever name makes you feel comfortable, whatever name brings you peace, I respect. But I'm going to go universal energy because it really is a massive energy that has different chapters and layers to it, so to speak. But she had to be willing to surrender and allow herself to be poured into and then follow the guidance that was offered. 
like I said, so many women are so hard headed and impatient and entitled because they're so busy being the boss themselves that they forget how to let go of the controls or they have issues letting go of the control. Doesn't matter what you do in your business life, which I guess I respect. I see women doing great things and I love, love, love watching us thrive. Oh my gosh, I see, I'm talking, I'm Instagram and I see so many women doing wonderful things and I already know there, there's a good chunk of them. Their romantic life is a mess. It's a mess and I'm not, and it, it's a mess. It's a mess because once again, learning how to take off that particular persona of businesswoman, successful woman, that boss chick, boss babe, boss bitch, boss whatever, and allow yourself to be in a position to receive a man that has a capacity to serve you. And I mean service in a way of being able to assist you, being able to offer you protection, offer you provision, offer you things that you're going to need to thrive in a way that also assist him. Because I've been seeing it around talking about, you know, how am I going to be able to be your place of peace if I'm out there hustling and grinding? And that's the truth. You can't have it both ways. You can't have me out there, you know, me also bucking up against the system, fighting the system, you know, and warrior gear 24-7. And then you want to come home and you need me to be peaceful and at ease and to put together this beautiful, peaceful home when I'm as stressed out as you. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So... We have to find a happy medium. Because here's the kicker. For the women that are actually out there doing all that boss babe shit, so to speak. And once again, not knocking it because I run my own business, obviously. More than one, just so you know. But I run my own business. And, you know, things are great. So for women out there being successful, and if they manage to achieve the, the, the beauty of a peaceful household... It's because they have the capacity, her and her husband, if they're wise people, they have hired people to assist. They have housekeepers, they have private chefs, they have nannies for the children. She's not required to do everything when she walks in the door from work. So when she walks in the door from her business, from whatever she's doing, because things are already taken care of, the, the mundane stuff we do to run households has been taken care of. So she can actually walk in the house and be at ease so that when he or whenever he gets home, then they can, they, she can be relaxed and show him what he needs to do so he can relax and there will be peace in the home. So one of the things I think I love most when I talk to my friends who, um, the women, the women that I met in South Florida, their families are Caribbean, Jamaica, Haiti, uh, Bermuda, I think the Bahamas, so I, and some other places I met. I've had some, I had a chance to meet women, and I love it because my closest friends, my the one the women I call my sisters, and they really are my sisters. I love this because they grew up around household staff. It wasn't that they didn't think twice about it. They've always in their household there was staff because they come from business families. There was a cook, there was a housekeeper. Their mothers did not work. They, I mean, their mothers did not do housework. Their mothers did not cook at home because the husbands overstood the importance of making sure that one of the, my, God, my sister, their mother did work in the family business. Her and her husband ran two business, ran some businesses together because that's what the mom enjoyed doing. And another one of my best friends, her mother never worked outside the home. She was she had, a, had a ton of kids. So she had her hands full, okay? Had her hands full with the household and raising of the children. And her husband, my friend's father, my sister's father, made sure that his wife never, ever, 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 ever had to do any type of heavy lifting or think twice. I had laughed because I remember she said something about, she doesn't even think her mother ever prepared her own cup of or the coffee or hot chocolate, some of whatever, coffee or hot chocolate. She goes, I don't think mommy has ever, ever fixed her own tea, whatever. Never. Her mother's never had to touch anything inside of a kitchen. Would you be able to sit back and allow it to take place for you? I'd have no problems with it. Trust me, I have no issues with it. None. None. There's a running joke between me and mine right now. I'm like going, you know, I have to be a domestic goddess now because it literally is just me. I go, but please hear me. Once I finally move and get situated and, and you know, because I'm in transition right now, because once again, I'm in the process of creating and doing some things. But once I get situated and settled again for real, oh, trust, 
there will be housekeepers or housekeepers and there will be a private chef facts and he kind of laughs because he knows he's like so said so done I'm like thank you I go you you so understand me <laughs> But I'm sharing this with you because, like I said, do you understand men? And could you be in a position to receive one when he's ready to pour and he's able to pour into you? Like I said, Sierra had to go through and unlearn so many bad habits. Sierra had to go through her process and unlearn so many ideologies. She had to go through and had to deal with the toxic friends and toxic family because I trust me she was not supported by those who supposedly claimed to love her for the most part she probably came out of it with some really really great friends but she probably went through the whole thing that most of my goddaughters go through and some of you are probably going through as well as you were transitioning from mass thinking into knowing self you start really you clear up people clear themselves out and you clear people out because you realize so many people are incredibly toxic and they resent you when you finally decide to no longer live in their toxic bubble and i'm here to tell you that's okay they're not supposed to matter of fact they're not supposed to either but they're just either too lazy or too scared or too whatever not to make those personal changes too and that's fine that's their right that's the beautiful thing but beautiful thing about free will we have choices and we can make them once again for the elevation or the detriment of self that is a personal choice and it's not for you or me to get in their way but it's also, but it's very important for you to remember that they have no right to get in your way either once you decide to make the, once you make the decision to shift and to live life in a way that really speaks to your truth. And if your truth is to be in a loving relationship, is for your truth is to have a man, for example, like a Russell, not Russell, because your man is not going to be Russell. Your man is going to be the person, the energy, the ideologies the whatever that speak to your heart and spirit. And if you're ready to receive this type of man, the interracial cross-cultural, you know, dating and romance, inner side or secrets is a great class because we're talking, once again, it's not just about you being in the space to date men from another ethnic group. If that's your choice and option, that's great. But the skill set you're going to learn will assist you with whomever you're choosing to date. And eventually going to marry because once again, you have to understand self. I'll never stop saying that ladies and gentlemen, I'm never going to stop saying it because how you live your best life is by learning how to be your best self. No apologies. No worries and wonders about other people's opinions. Because once again, that old saying that I love so much, your opinion to me is none of my business. And that's your truth. And it's far from being disrespectful. Because when I've said that before, I've had a couple people tell me, that sounds arrogant. Why does it sound arrogant? I'm speaking the truth. Somebody else's opinion of me isn't my business. It is none of my business because they don't know me. They're drawing conclusions, making assumptions about me. No, they have no concept who I am. People spend all this time on social media judging people. They judge people walking through life. They, you don't know the person. Do you live with them? Are you, and even people who live with people, you don't know that person a thousand percent either because there's going to be aspects of us that are just personal, that just are part of who we are that we're not sharing with the world. There will be people that know a good chunk of us, 99.9% .9 perhaps of us, but no one's going to know you a hundred percent. I don't even get 99.9%. .9%, I may say 95% of us. There's that 5% we keep to ourselves that we just do not to be, you know, secretive. It's just, that's our core. And it needs to be protected because that's what that generates the other energy that is us. So it's a great class. Rather, once again, you're looking to learn how to date. If you've never dated outside of your particular ethnic group, perhaps, or culture, it's a great class, once again, to start laying some groundwork for you. If you are currently dating outside of your current color zone, so to speak, and you're not having the kind of result, you and your, res your results are kind of like, ew or you're just unclear about what you're doing, wonderful course for you. And if you're already dating or even in a relationship outside of, I would go color zone, your ethnic group, this will also elevate your experience and assist you there as well. This 
course is about, once again, you really understanding self and learning what it is you desire to receive in reference to the masculine. So that when you decide to pray your prayer to allow yourself to be, to be open to receive that particular blessing, so to speak, once again, however you're going to go through it, so that you're ready to receive, i say it again, Sierra had to break herself down. She had to literally destroy who she was before to allow herself to be rebuilt. Guidance. She, Sierra had coaches. Trust me, she had somebody working with her. And she probably had a few people working with her. There may be some therapy. I don't know her, so please hear me. I, I no way, shape, or form know her, know her personally. Do not know what she did directly. But I know there was outside assistance. There had to be outside assistance to help her. And people that were healed to help her. Because you cannot make change if you're trying to do it by yourself. Because you cannot change something what is it what is insanity definition of einstein's definition of insanity trying to um doing the same things over and over again expecting different results so there's no way you can work with yourself and still keep doing the same thing and not do anything to change and have new results it's not happening just like uh, i don't know if it was young somebody i don't know if somebody that i think was young Carl Jung said that, you know, you can't change, a, you can't result, solve a problem when you're standing inside the problem because you can't see it because where you stand, it's not a problem. Like there are women who honestly believe with their little toxic ass selves that they should receive a man, a good man, when they've done nothing in reference to their character, their personality, their presence to be open to receiving a man, to be able to, have, to care for a man that actually is a great guy. Yeah, I see so many things on social media that have me go, oh, Lord, women doing things, saying things, embarrassing men in public, you know, trying to be cute and get likes for the great Instagram and destroying the relationships in the process. Destroying. I saw something the other day, which I'm not going to talk about. I was going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about it. But I saw something the other day where a woman embar literally embarrassed her boyfriend trying to do something cute to get some likes for Instagram. And he basically told him when he when she got home after her prank, when she got home, he, when he got he said, I'll be home in five minutes. He goes, have your shit packed in by the door. You're out. Because the prank she pulled on him was so foul. She, she embarrassed his man just to get some likes on Instagram. And that's the kind of woman that I'll be complaining later on that she can't find a good man. Men ain't shit because she and her stupidity totally ruined a great relationship. Trying to be cute for the gram. So I'm saying, how well do you know men? I'm asking because once again, you, you ladies gonna be able to try to pray this prayer to bring somebody into your life. And if you have no concept who you are and you're not gonna be able to be that container to hold his energy, you're not gonna receive him. And then you're gonna be online talking chat. So don't do that. <laughs> But anyway, oh my gosh, oh, I so love what I do. I do. I guess only because I see such great results happen with my goddaughters and muses and even the great responses I get from the videos I post here on Instagram and, and for my book. So I do appreciate all of you. You know this already. Um, but seriously, if you have not enrolled in the course, go ahead and get yourselves enrolled. Like I said, enrollment is open as we speak. Do not drag your feet because there's homework that you need to get started because next month in December, I will be doing at least two live calls for Q&A that will give us a chance to have this discussion. Ask me your questions. Like I said, in the realm of affluent, rich, and wealthy dating as well as interracial and cross-cultural dating, I have tons of background. Been there, done that. Like I said, I date who I, I, date who I desire to date. I do. Like I said... My preferences will always be brown skin, but I do appreciate a great man, regardless of the color of his skin. Like I said, I just, I, I, I just, I just, I just love, I just love brown skin. What can I say? I just do, um, because there's something so great about our men. There is something so incredibly great about our men, and I was raised by a phenomenal, phenomenal melanated man, and I raised three phenomenal melanated men. So. A little bit of a bias on my side, okay? <laughs> and I have zero issues with it. But I once again, but I do appreciate great appreciate great men. Doesn't matter what their colors, what the color of the skin may be. So, if you have not enrolled, 
click on the button in the description section to get yourselves into the class so you can be available to, re to be part of the live calls I'm doing in December. Have an awesome day and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.